Boys as young as 12 are being brought over from the Pacific Islands to boost the rugby performance of intermediate schools. Controversy erupted yesterday after the principals of at least 10 Auckland schools said they would be boycotting games against St Kentigan College next year because it had recruited five players from other schools for their 2019 First 15 competition. And while St Kent's is challenging the validity of that boycott, tonight Checkpoint can reveal intermediate schools are scouting for rugby players as young as 12 to bolster their talent for national competitions. Tipuki Intermediate decided a few years ago to borrow two players each season from schools in Fiji. Rugby Academy Director Darren Harvey says the boys come on scholarship for two terms before they're sent home and he told me Fiji was the obvious place to search for talent. We sat on the banks, we thought what can we do to revive rugby in our region which was so proud we thought the Rugby Academy would be one thing, and the second thing that we thought we would do was, um, you know, maybe go to Fiji or the islands. We, we decided Fiji just for the mere fact that um, they seem to offer a bit more of a point of difference, um, being Melanesian as opposed to Polynesians, because we're a school of uh, roughly 45% Māori, so we sort of had that Polynesian influence. But So we went across there, and we, we spoke with the principal and the board of trustees, and just said to them, hey, look, you know, can we can we do this? And um, they, they gave us our support. So it's been going for three years now. We'll be going across next year for the fourth time. It's, it's not a long time, Lisa. We, we go across in February. The boys come out at the end of Term 1. So they basically have Terms 2 and 3 in our school where um, it's all our rugby season, basically. Um, yeah, so how do, you, how do you scout these kids? How do you find them? Okay, so um, we go over to Suva. We we have a um, a local um, uh, well, a scout in this way. He, he coaches lots of the little um, schools and secondary schools over there. Um, they have a national tournament over there, and um, it's called the Kaji Tournament from under nines to under thirteens. And he just um, invites people to come to Suva if they want to try for a, a, a basically it's just a six month scholarship to our school and they go back to Fiji so the boys from this year are back in Fiji right now as we speak So so, uh, so is that scout a paid scout? Does the school pay him no, to no, scout for you? No, we don't pay him Right, no. and so the kids when you identify um, players that you're interested in, in offering the opportunity to what is the offer? What are they, do they do they get a scholarship? How does it work? Well, what happens, they get a, a six-month experience here at our school. Um, we have, um, so we, we get them here, they play club rugby here, they play for our, our school representative team, which I'm not sure if you've heard, we have Ty Mitchell rugby here. Um, that's a big tournament in the Bar Plenty, so they play that. Um, and if they're good enough, they get selected for what we call the Roller Mills. I'm not sure if you've heard of the Roller Mills, which is more of a North Island rep tournament where Auckland and Waikato then play. And more importantly, too, they they go to the Ames Games, which is really why we set mm. it up, because we wanted to make our school Ames team, um, you know, successful as well. So, so do you, you know, pay for they, all of that? Does the school pay for the expense of them coming over and accommodating them? H how does that work? OK, so we've got a, um, a local working group of just local businessmen, um, and we meet sort of once every couple of months. Um, obviously, being in the Kiwifruit region, a lot of them are uh, within the Kiwifruit industry. Um, they help out run the academy, and they help out with the Fiji scholarship as well. We have a, a local Fijian um, uh, person here with his wife, and they um, host the boys, and he's an, um, a local rugby identity as well. So it works out really perfectly. So donations ba basically cover the cost of the kids coming yes, yes, yes. to New Zealand. Do the families back in Fiji get anything? Do you offer them anything financially? No, no we don't. Okay. Because some people might look at it and say it's a really um, short opportunity, it suits the school in terms of the competition, why not partner up with another school and offer them some kind of enduring scholarship so if they want they can get their entire education here in New Zealand? Yeah, well it does, you know, it does cost a bit, you know, because we've got to fly them out here and we pay the host families and stuff so, we, you know, being a little school we don't, you know, while we have donations from the local community, um, you know, that's another yeah, you know, we're just sort of mindful of the cost and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's 
it's also too, it, it just, as I said, it, the six months, we just find for this age group, just perfect for them because it gives them experience in the classroom here and, you know, while we get something out of them on the rugby field, we get a lot also too within the school because they are part of our cup of huckers and our, we have a Asian pride group and they go to little competitions for that there. So it's just not all about the rugby. And, and then they go um, back to Fiji, but what do they get out of it? Because you get a you get a, a top class potentially winning rugby team. What do you think they get out of it? Well, first of all, they get the experience, right, a New Zealand experience, um, education and, and rugby, because rugby is different over here compared to there. Do uh, you try and hook them up with a, with a high school scholarship? No, we don't. Like, no, we don't, because you know, really it, it's up to them and their families what happens. Like, to be honest, the, the parents would love their boys to stay here, you know, from, was it, year nine for another five years, you know, but we says we can't guarantee them that. We can only guarantee them our little experience that we offer them. So the boys that have gone home, have you kept in contact with them? Do you know what yes. they do now? Yep, yep, yep. Because um, of that, you know, we're they're very much a Facebook community. So, I mean, um, parents and aunties and uncles and stuff, it's the way that we contact, you know, keep in touch with um, all the Fijians back there. You know, when we go back in February, we catch up with the, um, the families and we, we have a level, we have a bit of a get-together um, in one of the villages and we invite them all around and we just, you know, so, I mean, we're in contact with the boys all the time. So some people might wonder why you don't develop local players because it's been a bit of an issue with, with scouting overseas players and poaching from other schools. Why not bring up players who are in your district, in your school already? Well, that's what we do. This is what the rugby academy is for. Like, I mean, we have... But you're still, bringing in, you're still bringing in other, uh, other players from overseas and some people would say, hey, what about, what about the other kids? Well, I mean, we're only a small little school. Like, I mean, yeah. we probably didn't have, we probably wouldn't get the numbers to put them on the field. You know what I mean? It's not as if we're a big city school, like Tarang to me, you know, 1,300 kids or whatever. You know what I mean? It's for us. It was just a chance for us to give these guys an experience. You know, it gives us a little bit of a point of difference in the rugby field. But I mean, the reason, especially, you know, even take this year for instance, we went, we won Ames Games, but it wasn't because of the Fijians. It was actually basically because of the rugby academy and the, and the other boys that, you know. Um, the local Māori boys and the boys in our school that were the difference. It wasn't so much the Fijians. And that's Darren Harvey, who is a part of the Tapuki Intermediate Rugby Academy. They bring two players over a year from the islands. Generally, they're around the age of 12.